Good morning, modern steaders. It's a nice, brisk six degrees Fahrenheit out this morning. Oh, yesterday we were in the high 30s and rain. And today, six degrees out. <laughs> These weather swings have just been crazy lately. We've got a fun experiment we're gonna do in a little while. Gina said it was either them or me. So I figured we'd make an experiment out of it. <laughs> You're always in such a rush to get out of your nice warm house. It's warm in there, girls. You should stay. Let's go. Oh, when it's this cold out, I like to swap out their bucket and give them a new one. It's a nice warm water, huh, girls? Like, we don't care about our water. We want our food. That's what they want. Go ahead, get up. There you go. Go ahead. I know, you want your food. There it is. Now I gotta start keeping an eye out again and seeing if Willow goes back into heat or not. We should be start, she should be starting a heat cycle any day now if she's not pregnant. I'm hoping she's pregnant. We're really looking forward to having new goat babies in May. The goats did a really good job eating our Christmas tree that we put out here. But the second Christmas tree, they're not eating it as much. It smells good. My guess is whatever vitamins and minerals the Christmas tree offer for goats, they needed it really bad when I put out the first tree. And now with the second tree, they don't need those minerals and vitamins as much, so they're not eating it as fast. Also, when you're feeding your goats Christmas trees, know where they came from. Some tree farms spray them with paint. Some tree farms spraying with Roundup and all different sorts of things. The Christmas tree we gave them was from the wild. That one, we know the local tree farm that it came from. And we know we don't need to worry about feeding that one to the goats. But other than that, I wouldn't just feed any old Christmas tree to our goats. Did you finish eating all that alfalfa pellets, Willow? Still got a few more. Buttercup's like, I want what she's eating. You're silly. I'm surprised you're not eating your hay blossom. No? You know it's cold when the smoke in your chimney is going straight up in the air. I think we better put some more wood in the fire. <laughs> you comfortable there, Figaro? Is that comfortable for you? You're crazy. You're just crazy. You want to come out and feed the chickens of New York City? The sky looks beautiful this morning. Hopefully it's not frozen shut. Oh, it is. <laughs> this weather this winter has been so crazy. Uh, all right. 
everything keeps melting and freezing, melting and freezing. Ugh. There ain't no great way to deal with that. Morning, girls. If I feed you out here, you gonna come out? The chickens are willing to come out. I'd much rather have them come out and eat. Get some fresh air. Give their water pan a good whitewashing. Moose says, send me to Hawaii. I want the warmer weather. The chickens seem to be enjoying the fresh straw we gave them yesterday. Three eggs it looks like. One, two, three. Their egg production has come up a little bit. We've been getting between six and seven eggs a day. Where before the winter solstice, we were getting four to five. It's pretty interesting to see from just within a week or two, the egg production has already started to come back up. Before we can do this next part, we gotta run to town and pick up a couple of supplies. And I wanna wait until that sun comes up a little bit. That'll make more sense once we get started. First, we gotta take these wood shavings out of the back of the truck. We have a friend who's making some custom flooring for his house. He's been generous enough to save the spruce shavings from his planer and shaper so we can give them to our chickens and goats. back from town we got our supplies which is 10 bales of hay Gina is not as excited as I am about having 4,000 worms eating a bunch of goat turds in the basement she didn't think that was a great idea so we're gonna move them out to the greenhouse with the chickens and they build houses out of straw bales and it's a super insulator so I'll show you what we're gonna do but the heat coming out of the worm composting bin it's been crazy. I mean, it's like 80 to 85 degrees. So I'm hoping that the being in the greenhouse and them generating a bunch of heat is gonna be the right thing to do. I mean, I don't understand why you wouldn't want goat turds and worms in your basement. I mean, come on. Got some more goat turds to put in there. Surround it. 
We're going to surround it with pegs. might actually help provide the chickens with a little bit of heat. It's definitely an experiment, and we'll see what happens. With it being in the greenhouse, it won't be getting wet from the weather, and when the sun is out, it'll help warm up the hay bales, and I'm hoping that'll help generate heat inside the compost pile from the heat of the sun, and also from the worms making compost. don't want any air pockets so I'm gonna stuff it around here with hay. Actually, let's take this down. And we'll stuff in back behind it on this side with hay. So the nice thing about this urban worm bag composter is you just put all your compost in it and you leave it for three to four months. You don't need to keep adding to it. So this morning we're going to finish putting, filling it with compost and then come springtime it should be ready. Gonna fill the corners with hay. Yeah. Just wanna make sure that the hay stays all around the composting bin. I've done something similar like this before, just out of such a cold climate. And we used <laughs> rabbit manure and it worked awesome. A bunch of different leftover food. Uh, well, let's see if we can show the worms first. See all the worms in there? I don't know how good you can see them on camera. See all those moving things? There's 4,000 worms in here. We're gonna get this going good. Oh, yeah, see all the worms? Bam. Let's stir this up a little bit better. Got some beet greens in there, some eggshells, you name it. It's in there. I'm gonna add in goat manure for the fill it up, hopefully the rest of the way. We still have some more room in here. So I'll have to keep an eye open for more compostable things and add them in. Going to add warm water. The worms need a good amount of moisture. The chickens want it in there. I'm going to add some flakes of hay in here just to fill up that air pocket for more insulating value. And we can take that out later on when we add in more compostable material. The chickens are gonna love it. They got something new to play with. That something else to climb on. Uh. 
Oh, the chickens are gonna love it. They're having fun playing on it already. King of the mountain. That's the only way we're gonna find out if it's gonna work. You just gotta try and experiment. Sometimes our experiments fail, sometimes they work a little bit, and sometimes they work the way we wanted them to. And the only way to find out is by trying. You can't give up and you can't get mad at yourself if something doesn't work out, because you're never gonna know unless you try. The way I look at it is, come springtime, we'll either have some awesome compost. If we don't, we'll finish composting it and turn it into some good compost. And the chickens are gonna have something to do now in the greenhouse. They'll be climbing around on that mountain of hay, pecking through it a little bit, getting the seeds out of it, and they just have a good old time. Oh, one of Olivia's Christmas presents finally showed up. It only was about a month late after yeah. we ordered it. Mm -hmm. oh, I like it. It's nice. Your ponytail goes through your hat, huh? Yeah. Cool beans. You ready? <laughs> I think so. Come on, Pluto. What's that? You did. Why don't you drag the wagon right in? They'll come in, they'll want the hay. <laughs> you girls have no manners. Oh, it's hard to pull with a boat on it. Yeah. <laughs> no! She wants to ride. Says, let me get on first. <laughs> oh, Buttercup wants to ride too. <laughs> no. Silly goat. Yeah. All right, I gotta get that. Go sit in the back room. I'll bring you out a flake. What are you doing? I got your eggs. Two tablespoons melted butter. Tonight we're gonna try roasting up a chicken a different way than we have in the past. I'm gonna use a skillet instead of a roasting pan. And I wanna dry off our whole chicken. I took the wings and I just tucked them underneath themselves. Just makes it look a little different. We're gonna need about two tablespoons of kosher salt and two tablespoons of melted butter. The more you dry off the skin, the crispier it'll get. I have our oven preheating to at 350. Perfect timing. Take a little bit of salt, probably about at least a teaspoon, if not more. So get the inside of the cavity salted up nicely. Flip it over. <coughs> Back side, I'm gonna salt it up. I haven't tried this recipe before. If you guys remind me, I'll put a link in the description down below. If I forget, leave it in the comments and I will add it. 
Before I salt the top side, I want to cover it in butter. Put the extra inside the cavity. Now we're going to put salt on the outside. This is what the bird's going to look like before it goes in the oven. If you don't have your legs tucked together with a piece of the skin, you can use butcher twine and tie them up. I'm going to put it in the oven and let it bake for an hour. Oh, it's looking delicious. A little bit longer. This is why we cook the chicken in a skillet so we can make gravy right, like, right in here. We're going to add in a third of a cup of chicken broth and a tablespoon of water. Should have, should have told me later. They could have had the camera pointing over here. Yeah, right. Did you just scare your mother? Yeah. That's not very nice. I Give me a hug. <laughs> we were sent up one more package. When I was at the PO box, I picked it up. Go ahead, you can open it and see what it is. Handmade pot holders. Cool beans. I want to know how to do that. Cool. I want to know how to make it. See all the different colors. Yeah. Those are cute. I like them all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cute. Maybe this is my favorite. Yeah, it's cute. Thank you. Thank you. We are feasting like kings tonight. Uh, and chicken is also already good. And we got gravy from the chicken. The chicken is really good because of the chicken. You already tested the chicken? Yeah. It's really good. It's really good. It's really good. Brussels sprouts looking nice and roasted. I 
think one of the best gifts you can give yourself, or even better, to give to your kids, is to teach yourself or your kids how to cook. When we were growing up, I don't remember how old me, my brother, my sister were, my mother started it, but when we were growing up, my mom made us each cook a night. So there was five of us, so we each had our night. Man, we used to hate having to cook, but even more than cooking, we used to hate having to clean up the dishes. But I'll tell you what, that has been one of the best gifts my mother has ever given me, is forcing us to cook. And that's what it was at first. She was forcing us. We hated it. But, man, later in life, it has become so useful. When I first moved out of the house and was living on my own, I knew how to cook. I didn't always make the best meals. Sometimes I would cook and I'd have to go out to dinner. But if it wasn't for all that, I never would have been cooking what I'm cooking now. And I'm not the greatest chef yet, but someday I will be. And it's just trial and error. You can't give up. Every once in a while, you gotta eat a bad meal. Every once in a while, you can't eat the meal you cooked. But I'll tell you what, man, it is so rewarding. And I just love being able to share that with Olivia. It is just so much fun. I'm, I feel truly blessed that we can share this with everybody on YouTube. I just hope that's one thing I can inspire y'all to do, is just get in the kitchen and get cooking. No matter if you mess up or not. Start baking. I say cook or bake whatever you love. That's where I started. For a while there when I was in high school, I used to bake on the weekends just because I loved it. I loved cookies. I loved brownies. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with that. If that's what it's going to take to get you in the, the kitchen is to cook some sweets, I say go for it. So thanks for coming along on our journey with us. Sorry for my voice. I got a little coughing rasp going on. But just wanted to let you guys know we love you. We're truly blessed by you. And we hope we can bless your family in some way. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres, a guide to modern homesteading, self-sufficiency, and freedom.